I'll never forget that fateful evening when my world shattered. It started like any other night. I was folding laundry while the TV droned on in the background. That's when I overheard Eric's raised voice coming from the study. Listen, we need to move quickly before she catches wind of this, he hissed into the phone. Once that property is sold, we'll have more than enough to get the business going. My hands froze on the shirt I was folding. Was he talking about selling my grandparents' estate, the home I had inherited and loved more than anything? A cold knot formed in my stomach as I moved closer to the study door. Don't worry about Lorraine, Eric continued, oblivious that I was eavesdropping. That sentimental fool doesn't have a clue about the investment opportunity I've cooked up. She'll sign over the deed without a second thought when I spin it right. A wave of nausea washed over me as the truth became clear. My own husband, the man I had loved and trusted for over twenty years, was plotting to swindle me out of my family legacy through some sort of fraudulent scheme. How could he betray me like this? I wanted to burst through that door and demand answers, but I remained rooted in place, trying to make sense of the venomous words still spilling from his lips. Once we bleed that cash cow dry, we'll be set for life, he said with a sinister chuckle. Lorraine is so wrapped up in that rustic old dump, she'll never see it coming. Tears stung my eyes as a lifetime of memories from that rustic old dump flashed before me. Holidays, birthdays, lazy summer evenings on the porch with my grandparents. How dare he denigrate something so profound? Get the paperwork ready. We'll make her think she's investing in a can't-miss opportunity. Won't be the first time I've taken a fool for her money. His callous words sliced into me like a knife. As his laughter trailed off, I stood there shaking with rage and disbelief. The enormity of his betrayal left me reeling. My heart pounded as I realized my husband of over two decades was not the man I thought he was. In that moment, one thing was clear. I would not allow Eric to tear my family legacy apart through his greed and deceit. As frightening as it was to have my life upended so abruptly, I knew I had to fight for what mattered most. There would be no more wilted trust between us, only the bitter truth laid bare. Squaring my shoulders, I strode into his study, the proof of his sin still ringing in my ears. Our eyes locked in an icy glare as the first battle lines were etched into the trenches between us. We need to talk, I said in a low, stern voice, and you'd better start with the truth this time. Growing up, the family estate meant everything to me. It was my entire world, a place of cherished memories, love, and belonging. My grandparents bought the rambling old house and acres of land when I was just a girl, before eventually passing it down to me and my brother. While he decided to sell his share for a quick buck years ago, I could never let go of that profound connection to our roots. The estate was a steadying force, a reminder of what truly mattered in this life. Family, hard work, integrity, values Eric once claimed to honor. Those first few years of our marriage were full of promise and joy. I actually believed Eric respected the heritage and responsibility that came with the estate. How naive I was. This place is a relic, Lorraine. He started in on me one night after returning from an alumni event downtown. The cigar smoke wafted off his clothes as he loosened his tie. Don't you want something more modern, befitting our status? I set down the book I had been reading, instantly bristling. This isn't just a place, Eric. It's my family's history, our daughter's history. He scoffed, ashing his cigar onto the rug. You mean that dump where your grandparents used to slum it? Yeah, real proud heritage there. The cruel sarcasm cut deep, as did the little digs he took at my grandparents over the years. They were good, hard-working people who established this humble estate through sheer determination— I opened my mouth to protest, but Eric barreled ahead, well-practiced in verbal combat. Face it, babe, the Torah wagon you've been hauling around is holding us back. Kids at school already mock Mara about her crunchy parents and their leave-it-to-beaver lifestyle. He sneered the words like they were insults as he advanced on me, cigar clenched between his teeth. The reek of smoke filled my nostrils as he leaned in close. This place is isolated, run down, a relic of another era— how much longer do you think we can float this financial sinkhole on my income alone, huh? My anger grew, burning in my chest like the smoke swirling around him. After months of subtle taunts and dismissive jeers, I refused to stay silent this time. 
You know damn well this estate generates plenty to sustain itself. I fired back, leaping from the couch. The rental properties, the crops, the— Oh, save it for your farmer's almanac, Lori. He cut me off with a wave of his cigar, peppering me with degrading pet names he knew I hated. If things were so peachy keen with your precious piggy bank, we wouldn't be drowning in debt trying to keep up this charade. The last insult stung worse than the smoke hazing the room. I was no fool. I knew exactly where our hard-earned money had truly vanished over the years. Gambling, booze, God knows what other vices. Eric expertly concealed his failings, lying through his gleaming white teeth. Mara's footsteps thumped down the hallway, no doubt disturbed by our shouting. Eric shot me one last scathing look before snuffing out his cigar on the coffee table. Evidence of his contempt stamped into the finish. This discussion isn't over, he warned, straightening his suit jacket as our daughter entered the room. With a smarmy grin, he added under his breath, not by a long shot. A few days after overhearing Eric's twisted plans, I was upstairs organizing the home office when I noticed some papers sticking out oddly from the bottom drawer of the filing cabinet. With an uneasy feeling, I knelt down and tugged it open. What I found made my blood run cold. A bundle of documents with my signature forged in looping amateurish penmanship across the bottoms. Deeds, quitclaim forms, power of attorney paperwork, all giving Eric full legal rights to the estate and its assets. My hands shook with rage and disbelief as I flipped through the fake contracts, my stomach hollowing out. So this was his sinister plot to snake away my inheritance. That low-life scoundrel was going to bankrupt me of everything. The land, the land, the properties, every penny I had. Hey, babe, what you got there? I nearly jumped out of my skin at the sound of Eric's voice behind me. Instinctively, I crumpled the documents into my hands as he entered, acting as nonchalant as a cheating husband possibly could. Working on some spring cleaning, I lied through clenched teeth, hoping he couldn't detect the fury simmering in my veins. Found some junk we should toss. Eric slinked over, that disgusting Cheshire cat grin plastered on his face. Well, don't get rid of anything important, sugar tits. The crude pet name repulsed me as much as his closeness. I backed away, shoving the paperwork deeper into my robe pocket. Don't worry, I know what's valuable. He took another menacing step forward, no doubt trying to intimidate me into dropping my guard. But my anger had been stoked into an inferno. I refused to back down like a coward in my own home. Speaking of valuable, Eric purred in that subversive tone, you know that little investment opportunity I mentioned? The one that could really set our family up for life? I narrowed my eyes, maintaining every ounce of self-control. You're going to have to run that by me again, Eric, with all the details this time. His serpentine grin somehow stretched even wider as he started laying out his fabricated lies, how he had found an amazing no-risk investment that basically printed money, how a tiny cash influx was all that was needed to reserve our spot, blah, blah, blah. The gall of this man. So as you can see, honey, he drawled, inching even closer. Liquidating those deadweight properties of yours would be a real boon to our family's future. I'm talking long, exotic vacations. Fancy new rides, early retirement with zero money worries. That's when he made his move, snaking a clammy hand around my waist and leering into my face. We could finally be free of this place, Lorraine. Free to really live it up and enjoy the finer things. You'd finally get that glamour you deserve, baby. I recoiled at his putrid touch and the sickening con he was trying to sell me. This worm didn't care about me or our family, just hoarding wealth through fraud. After over twenty years of marriage, his true self had slithered out from its hole. In that moment, Mara came down the hall and froze at the sight of her slimeball father draped all over me like a cheap suit. Everything okay in here? Eric immediately withdrew his features hardening to those of a cold manipulator. Just having a little financial chat with your mother. Don't, I spat, jabbing a finger at his bloated chest. Don't you dare poison our daughter's mind with your twisted lies too, Eric. The only future you're angling for is one of greed and sin. Mara looked on in shock, sensing the brutal animosity emanating from me like heat waves. Chest heaving, vision blurred with hot tears, I held up the forged contracts clutched in my fist. Your little get-rich scheme ends now, you despicable snake. My family legacy is not for sale. With that, 
I hurled the crumpled evidence directly at Eric's face before storming off, leaving him gape-mouthed and finally speechless for once. The battle lines had been drawn in the biggest fight of my life. The days following my explosive confrontation with Eric were a bitter blur. He stayed sequestered in the home office, no doubt shredding evidence and covering his tracks. Meanwhile, I began gathering documents, making copies of deeds and trusts, anything to protect my assets. Mara was a rock during this whirlwind, loyally standing by my side despite the betrayal of her own father. We strategized together in hushed tones at the kitchen table, talking through our next moves. Mom, you know I've got your back, right? She said, squeezing my hand. That scumbag isn't going to swindle you out of a penny. I managed a tearful smile, my heart swelling with gratitude to have her in my corner. Thanks, kiddo. With you fighting beside me, I know we'll get through this. Over the following week, the estate felt like a simmering battleground. Eric and I moving in airtight orbits, exchanging icy silence and seething stares whenever crossing paths. More than once I caught him on shady business calls, making me physically ill with anger. One afternoon, I was unexpectedly greeted by the sight of a U-Haul idling in the driveway when returning from town. My heart plummeted as I pulled in, seeing Eric lugging boxes from the house to the truck's maw. "'You lying son of a bitch!' I roared, slamming the car door as I charged towards him. "'Where do you think you're going with my belongings?' Eric didn't so much as flinch continuing to hoist another box into the truck's belly. "'Not yours,' he grunted without looking at me. "'Just taking what's mine and hitting the road.' The cruel indifference in his voice cut worse than any profanity. My fists clenched as he brushed past me towards the house again. "'You smug prick!' I followed closely at his heels up the porch steps. "'If you think I'm just going to let you ride off into the sunset with your sick little payday after trying to defraud me— you're even crazier than I. Shut it, Lorraine, he whirled on me, finally showing a crack in that plastic mobster demeanor of his. This little fiefdom of yours means nothing to me. Never did. So enjoy wallowing in your granddaddy's rotten old shit pile if you want. I'm getting out while I still can. He tried to shoulder past me into the house, but I held my ground, immovable, unafraid of his bullying tactics any longer. You're not taking one cent, Eric. I growled through gritted teeth. And you're sure as hell not getting an inch of this estate. Not after what you've done. He snorted derisively, clearly unmoved. Mara's footsteps clattered up behind us, alerted by the commotion. What's going on? She cried, clutching her robe tight. Eric lazily turned his attention onto his own flesh and blood, somehow managing to look even more disgusting than usual. Just saying goodbye to you two lovely ladies, he sneered venomously. Your trailer park mama might have screwed me out of my rightful property, but she can't stop me from washing my hands of both of you freeloaders. Mara gasped in shock and disgust, shrinking away from the putrid display of hatred spewing from her father's mouth. I instantly moved to shield her. You hateful pig. My rage was molten, nearly blinding me as I stepped towards Eric with a clenched fist raised. How dare you speak to her like that, you miserable excuse for a father— You've betrayed us all for money and lies. But he simply leveled his familiar sadistic smirk at me. You mouthy little ingrate, better watch yourself before. Hey, a commanding voice suddenly rang out. What's all this ruckus? We wheeled around to see old Henry striding up the drive, suit jacket billowing in the breeze, his jaw set in a grim line as he took in the shameful scene. Henry, thank God, I breathed, never so relieved to see my family's trusted attorney before. If anyone could help navigate this mess, he could. Henry moved up the steps, fixing Eric with a steely gaze of disgust and contempt. I saw my soon-to-be ex-husband shrink slightly under the scrutiny of this grizzled family friend. An ally had arrived. "'Why don't we all go inside and sort out this situation?' Henry declared in his unwavering baritone, jerking his head towards the house. "'Because from the looks of things, you've already dug quite a hole for yourself, Eric.' With Henry's guidance, Mara and I quickly got to work building an ironclad case against Eric. We scoured records high and low, uncovering a dizzying trail of forged documents, suspicious bank transfers, and shady business dealings spanning years. The sheer depth of his lies and deception was staggering. That worm has been salting away funds illegally for who knows how long? 
Henry Grimest as we compiled the evidence into bulging file folders, using your estate as a veritable piggy bank. My heart sank as printouts detailing years of embezzlement filled the table before us. I had been so blinded by love and trust, allowing Eric to manipulate me at every turn while living a sham of a marriage. We'll make him pay for every cent, Mara stated coldly, her face hardened into an expression I'd never seen from my kind-hearted daughter before. The jail sentence better be worth it, after all he's put us through. I reached over and gave her hand a grateful squeeze, internally marveling at her remarkable strength throughout this harrowing ordeal. Over the following days, an unsettling hush lingered over the estate, only broken by the occasional buzzing of Mara's printer or Henry's gravely monologues as he strategized our next moves. We bushwhacked through the legal wilderness, carefully cataloging each crooked transaction and backroom deal Eric tried to bury in his ashes. My former husband had not been heard from since that fateful day on the porch, presumably slinking off to whatever dingy motel would grant a snake like him shelter these days. But we knew better than to think he would simply slink away and allow the forces of justice to prevail unchallenged. Sure enough, a snarling voice message from Eric soon arrived on my cell phone, filling us with a fresh surge of revulsion towards the worm. You think you've got everything all figured out with your little playhouse investigation? He sneered over the distortion, somehow sounding even more detestable through the tiny speaker. You're just getting started in way over that pretty little head of yours, princess. A cold shudder ran down my spine as the vitriol kept spilling forth. Should have just signed over the keys when you had the chance. This war you and Henry started with me ain't gonna be pretty. And when I'm done burning it all down around you, that prissy brat daughter of ours won't have a family legacy left to piss away. The message finally cut off after one last menacing chuckle, its poisonous reverberations lingering in the air. That piece of human filth! Henry growled, snatching up the phone and furiously thumbing at the screen. Trying to spew threats and intimidate us at this stage? Well, he's about to find out just how big a bear he really poked. Moments later, he was barking into the phone in that unmistakable legal pit bull cadence of his. You viperous little grifter, you leave those two out of this right now, before I see to it that every dirty napkin drawing in your Ponzi playground gets dragged in front of the grand jury. He paused, seemingly allowing Eric to voice some sniveling retort before promptly eviscerating it. Save the dog and pony show for the cellmates you're about to make. We've got enough tax evasion, money laundering, and straight-up theft in these files here to have you doing twenty to life three times over before your next hairpiece installment gets shipped out. That last one seemed to strike a nerve as Henry smirked triumphantly before delivering the killing blow. Yeah, I'd say it's high time we took out the trash for good around here, Eric, starting with draining every infected pocket you've been sliming up over the years under Lorraine's good name. Might even get to keep that trophy house of hers, too, once all your assets have been duly repossessed by the courts. With that, he jabbed the receiver with a meaty thumb, ending the call with an air of finality. He turned back to us, his eyes glinting with the thrill of battle. This worm has nowhere left to wriggle, Henry proclaimed, snapping the folder shut with a loud whack before sliding it back towards us. Time we took out this trash for good. Mara and I exchanged tentative smiles, our first tastes of hope rekindling through the fear and anger. The reckoning with Eric was fast approaching, and this time we'd make sure Karma packed a serious punch. A few days later, Henry received a tip on Eric's whereabouts from one of his shady associates, looking to cut a deal. Turned out the weasel had been operating a fly-by-night investment firm downtown, no doubt the crooked scheme he hoped to bankroll by liquidating my estate. Figures that worm would infest the financial district with his particular brand of slime, Henry grumbled as we pulled up in front of the rundown office building. Mara eyed the dilapidated structure warily. You sure this is legit, Mom? Looks pretty abandoned. Only one way to find out, I stated grimly, killing the engine. If there's even a chance your daddy dearest is inside peddling more lies, I'm ending this once and for all. 
filing out of the car, we strode toward the entrance with rigid termination, my backbone reinforced by the prospect of finally confronting Eric again. Enough was enough. Time to cut out this cancer for good. The rickety elevator opened onto a dimly lit hallway reeking of mildew and desperation. Echoing voices and indistinct shuffling drew us toward a cracked open door near the end. Henry cautiously pushed it open, revealing a dingy, overcrowded office, complete with cheap furnishings, ringing phones, and a glimpse of Eric himself rapidly shuffling through a stack of files with his back turned. "'You just going to keep waddling around in that pit of snakes indefinitely, Eric?' I announced loudly, causing him to freeze in place like a deer in headlights. "'Or are you ready to face the consequences of your actions like a man for once?' Slowly he turned to face his accusers, his tanned features registering surprise at first before morphing into a mask of defiant bravado. "'Well, well, the wronged window and her white knight have come calling,' he sneered, stepping out from behind his ramshackle desk as the toadies around us shrank back in confusion. "'Though the mutt there is taking things a bit far. Letting dogs run the puppy mill now, Lorraine?' I started forward in a rage, fists clenched, but Henry grabbed my arm restrainingly. "'Keep barking, you mangy cur,' the attorney spat. "'But we've got more than enough dirt to bury you for the next century, so why don't you do us all a favor and start coming clean on this mess for once?' "'Ooh, touched a nerve with the puppy comment, did we?' Eric continued goading, his eyes glinting with malice. "'Might want to invest in a tighter muzzle for that junkyard mutt you're pimping around as security. You slimy piece of—' Mara started forward, her face flushed with fury, but I held her back as Henry raised a staying hand. All this whistling in the dark won't change the fact that the jig is officially up, Eric, he stated calmly, meeting the cornered rat's gaze levelly. We've got documentation tying you to dozens of fraudulent business ventures, Ponzi schemes, you name it. Then of course there's all the back taxes, money laundering, and embezzlement over the years— all of it leading back to your sad trail of greed and burnt bridges. For the first time, Eric seemed to pale slightly under the weight of the charges leveled against him. Around the room, I could sense his minions shifting uncomfortably, no doubt catching wisps of the unmistakable stench that always accompanied a sinking ship. That's, that's preposterous, you overgrown bailiff, Eric blustered unconvincingly. You don't have a shred of proof linking me to anything legitimate, let alone viable for prosecution. But Henry simply smirked, clearing, relishing the role of the righteous victor at long last. Really? Because the IRS, DA's office, and half a dozen financial institutions would beg to differ after seeing what we've collected. He retrieved a thick folder from beneath his arm and tossed it onto the desk dismissively. Tax forms, bank statements, testimony, everything spelling out exactly what a duplicitous, penny-ante shyster you really are. How Eric's face had gone completely ashen by now, as he stared at the damning stack of evidence. Whether from genuine shock or simply being called out, his bravado seemed to sink through the floorboards before our very eyes. And here's the real kicker. Dirt bag. Henry went for the kill leveling an accusatory finger straight at Eric's shriveling face. Every trampled victim whose life you burned down for your selfish profit, every single one gets to weigh in at your sentencing, too. It was like someone lancing a boil. The minions still huddled nearby immediately erupted in furious shouts, realizing just how thoroughly they'd been had. You lying son of a bitch. I'm ruined because of you. Where's my money, you swindling rat? The outrage bombarded Eric from every angle as his phony empire came crashing down in spectacular flames. I watching in perverse satisfaction as he withered under the force of retribution he'd brought upon himself. Faster than I could process, the mob of disgruntled investors was swarming him, raining blows from every direction amid a cacophony of furious threats and accusations. Not that I cared to intervene. The snake was reaping exactly what he deserved and for once in his pathetic life, Eric made no move to defend himself from the onslaught. Standing amid the ruins of his con, he simply hung his head and accepted his fate like the broken husk of a man he truly was. In the aftermath of Eric's collapse, the news of his sordid schemes detonated like a bombshell across our community. Day after day, more victims crawled from the woodwork—former employees, investors, business partners— 
each coming forward with a more appalling account of his duplicity than the last. Can you believe this smug prick tried to peddle me a racehorse breeding pyramid scheme last spring? One enraged man ranted to the throng of reporters camped outside the county courthouse. Called it a prime opportunity to get in on the ground floor of the next big thing. He owned a third of my diner until I woke up to find the lock changed and his name scrubbed off everything. An elderly woman sobbed to the cameras, clutching a faded photo. Sixty years of blood, sweat, and tears, gone in one night when he claimed ownership through some bullshit fine print. With each newly uncovered outrage, Eric's shattered reputation disintegrated even further into a fine coating of scum. Local news vans became permanent fixtures in our neighborhood, hounding myself and Mara for reactionary sound bites to the ceaseless stream of lurid revelations. Mom, they're at the gate again, Mara would call out in dread each morning, peeking through the curtains at the news crew's encampment. Could we maybe just skip town for a few days until this all blows over? But deep down, we both knew there was no escaping the radioactive fallout of Eric's lies until every last scabrous sin had been dragged into the disinfecting daylight. And for me, there was a grim solace in not shying away from his ruination, an act of defiance and justice after being smothered by his deceptions for so many years. And slouching through the chaos each day was the husk of Eric himself, a specter wandering the grounds in a daze, as if searching for whatever fragments of dignity still remained. There's the snake himself, folks. Eric Henderson, the scamming scumbag who swindled his own household for over a decade. A reporter aimed a microphone from several yards away one afternoon, forcing his camera crew right into my former husband's path like ambulance chasers. How's it feel to have that web of fraud exposed for all to see, sir? Care to comment on the investor funds confirmed to be squandered on gambling and illicit spending? Flanked by stone-faced deputies, Eric simply averted his gaze and remained silent, shoulders sagging even further beneath the weight of compounded shame. His foot-dragging pace pressed on without response, the miserable evening of his life now inescapable in high-definition spotlight. For once, he had no scathing retort, no greased excuse to hide behind, only naked truth. Come on, you've been completely cut off from your assets now, your reputation ruined beyond repair. What's left to hide? The journalist taunted mercilessly. The world deserves an explanation from you, scammer. That finally seemed to pierce Eric's veil of numbness as his reddened eyes flashed with sputtering rage for the first time. Halting in his tracks, he wheeled onto the leering camera in a defensive stance, ruddy features twisting into his all-too-familiar mask of smug contempt. Here it came, I thought, the patented Eric Henderson charm offensive, What's left to hide, huh? He shot back in a gruff, venomous tone. How about the thousands of gullible saps like yourselves, so desperate for easy riches that they practically threw their life savings at me to pss away? Before the slack-jawed crew could react, Eric was already sneering and firing off volatile salvos like he just couldn't help himself. Maybe if any of you losers spent more time actually earning instead of chasing get-rich-quick fairy tales, you wouldn't get so easily suckered when a real operator comes along to take you for a ride. Come on, you were practically begging to be felched for every last cent with those sob stories. Hey, watch your mouth, jackass! One of the deputies warned, grabbing Eric's bicep firmly to no avail. The vitriolic spigot had been turned back on full blast, sputtering hot vile at anyone in range. Nobody was holding a gun to your empty, greedy little skulls to buy those prime investment opportunities wholesale, my friends. You wanted the big score without any effort, a free ride on the Eric Henderson wealth train. Well, congratulations, hope, those fantasy vacations to Tahiti were worth it while they lasted. He punctuated the merciless tirade by spitting a thick gob of phlegm directly at the petrified reporter's feet, his leering expression never wavering. An appalled hush fell over the gathered crowd as several of the deputies immediately wrestled Eric back, dragging his howling form down the path and out of sight. But the damage had been done, one last poisonous spurt of hatred and denial from a man drowning in lies until the bitter end. There would be no self-awareness or redemption for someone so toxically steeped in greed and delusion. A sad, empty tin shell of a human being. As shaken bystanders absorbed his grotesque meltdown in shock, 
I turned and headed back inside, finally feeling liberated from Eric's malignant influence for good. Let the world digest that putrid display at its leisure. I was officially done wasting another moment dwelling on this monster's sickness. Every day he just digs that hole a little deeper, doesn't he? Mara remarked quietly, joining me in the hall after the disturbance had passed. I simply nodded, too weary to even feel anger anymore. Hard to believe that depraved bully used to be the most important person in our lives. My sweet daughter wrapped her arms around me in a warm embrace, giving me the strength and solace that Eric never could. We survived him, Mama. That's all that matters now. What's left to hide, huh? He shot back in a gruff, venomous tone. How about the thousands of gullible saps like yourselves, so desperate for easy riches, that they practically threw their life savings at me to puss away? Before the slack-jawed crew could react, Eric was already already sneering and firing off volatile salvos like he just couldn't help himself. Maybe if any of you losers spent more time actually earning instead of chasing get-rich-quick fairy tales, you wouldn't get so easily suckered when a real operator comes along to take you for a ride. Come on, you were practically begging to be felched for every last cent with those sob stories. Hey, watch your mouth, jackass, one of the deputies warned, grabbing Eric's bicep firmly to no avail. The vitriolic spigot had been turned back on full blast, sputtering hot vial at anyone in range. Nobody was holding a gun to your empty, greedy little skulls to buy those prime investment opportunities wholesale, my friends. You wanted the big score without any effort. A free ride on the Eric Henderson wealth train. Well, congratulations. Hope those fantasy vacations to Tahiti were worth it while they lasted. He punctuated the merciless tirade by spitting a thick gob of phlegm directly at the petrified reporter's feet, his leering expression never wavering. An appalled hush fell over the gathered crowd as several of the deputies immediately wrestled Eric back, dragging his howling form down the path and out of sight. But the damage had been done. One last poisonous spurt of hatred and denial from a man drowning in lies until the bitter end. There would be no self-awareness or redemption for someone so toxically steeped in greed and delusion. A sad, empty tin shell of a human being. As shaken bystanders absorbed his grotesque meltdown in shock, I turned and headed back inside, finally feeling liberated from Eric's malignant influence for good. Let the world digest that putrid display at its leisure. I was officially done wasting another moment dwelling on this monster's sickness. Every day he just digs that hole a little deeper, doesn't he? Mara remarked quietly, joining me in the hall after the disturbance had passed. I simply nodded, too weary to even feel anger anymore. Hard to believe that depraved bully used to be the most important person in our lives. My sweet daughter wrapped her arms around me in a warm embrace, giving me the strength and solace that Eric never could. We survived him, Mama. That's all that matters now. Over the following months, Eric's legal reckoning unfolded through a full slate of court proceedings, each more withering than the last, charges ranging from tax evasion to financial malfeasance to outright theft were methodically doled out by stone-faced arbiters of justice. Having examined all evidence of the systematic fraud, racketeering, and illicit business practices perpetrated by the defendant over a span of decades, the judge's grave ruling cut like a scalpel. This court is left with no recourse except to impose the fullest possible sentences for a striking majority of charges. I'll never forget the sour look of impotent rage twisting Eric's features as the judge continued listing off his near-endless litany of felonious conduct like a macabre sung poetry. An entire wasted life of deceit and greed laid bare for all to see. Aggregate sentencing for all crimes levied against Mr. Eric Henderson will total 78 years imprisonment without possibility for early parole, along with punitive financial penalties reaching into the millions of dollars. The courtroom audience erupted in a mix of cheers and jeers at the harsh judgment, though Eric remained seated and unmoving, simply staring daggers at myself and Mara from across the aisle. But we met his withering glare with stiff spines and clear consciences. He alone had authored his demise through avalanching lies and treachery. Redemption and grace may yet avail you before journey's end, Mr. Henderson. The judge's booming voice rang out over the din, quieting the chamber once more to address the ashen convict directly. Though at present, 
I sense in you only the hollowest of shells, a man long ago consumed by his own boundless veracity and corruption. Greed, thy name is writ large across you like a skin of damnation. Eric betrayed neither shame nor repentance at the damning proclamation, simply sitting molted and silent as granite. Should regret ever penetrate the walls you've built around your soul, I urge you to tend that flicker while future remains, the judge continued somberly. For in my many decades presiding over even the most repugnant of society's dregs, seldom have I encountered someone as utterly tragically empty as he before me, a prison of your own vain making to endure until the world at last discards you, 